Hi, I am pastor and missionary Alan Rich from the Sharing Center Ministries, also called the Alan Rich Ministries. If you don't know nothing about me or the ministry, you can go to sharing-center.com to see the overall activities of this ministry in the world. And you can go <clears throat> on the site uh, healinganddeliverancecenter.com healinganddeliverancecenter.com to visit the site of the Solomon's Porch which is the International uh, Healing and Deliverance Center in France where you are welcome uh, if you need anything that we offer to see uh, our services, our ministries, you can go to those sites. Now on this uh, <clears throat> video, it's a little special because uh, I'm going to give a prophetic message. Um, please do not miss uh, the message I did where I explained the difference <clears throat> between uh, the gift of prophecy, uh, a prophecy, a prophetic message, and a prophet. Because sometimes it's all mixed up in people's uh, head. <clears throat> it's uh, special because we are now <clears throat> in March, the end of March, 2014, 2014, and I never, I think, I never gave a prophetic message in English, <clears throat> but I gave um, few or many in French for some years now, and the Lord uh, never. <clears throat> inspired me or pushed me to t uh, translate them in English because uh, there are many messages that I do in both language which means I do it maybe in, in, in French and then I do the <coughs> about the same in English it's different because the inspiration is different but God never gave me uh, the inspiration to translate or to make uh, those prophetic message, messages in English. Why? Because uh, what I feel spiritually is that they were specifically for the French speaking churches and especially uh, the churches of Europe, of countries like where they speak French, like France, Belgium, <coughs> and uh, Switzerland. I didn't even feel that some of them were for other countries where French is spoken, like Quebec in Canada or uh, many countries in Africa. So even though people ask me, why don't you, I would like to hear what you said, and I would like you to <clears throat> translate it. For me, a prophetic message is not like a simple message. Because a message, a teaching, can be given for all. But uh, what would be the use uh, to, if I have a prophetic message for you personally, what good would be... To give it to another one because it's 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 only for you but <clears throat> now God the Holy Spirit <clears throat> uh, showed me I don't know why but I obey to explain my last prophetic message I gave in February 2014 which means it's about two months, two and, uh, two and a half months ago. 
as I say, I don't know exactly why or I don't understand because for those who are practicing some gift of the Spirit or prophecy or prophetic messages, you know that uh, it's not like a teaching that you prepare and you know why you are saying the thing you are saying because you are understanding them and you want to share what you understood to other people so to make it as clear as possible. But a prophetic message, you may understand what you are talking about, but many times, and it's my case, I really don't, I don't really understand why God tell me to say something. Now, uh, how do we know that a prophetic message come from God? Don't worry, I'm going to give the prophetic message. <clears throat> well, when God says something, it happened. That's all. And it's written in the Bible. I'm not going to give the verses now. It's, it's very well known. If a prophet says something uh, that it comes from God and that things he said does not happen, this man was not sent by God. <clears throat> now, it doesn't mean that you say something that happened that it come from God. Clairvoyant, mediums, all that, they say... Uh, truth. They will. They tell you in five years this will happen in your life, and it doesn't come from the spirit of God, but from demons. But it's another story. Anyhow, as I say, I let myself as much as possible be led by the Holy Spirit. And when I give a prophetic message, I explain now because it my it's my first. In English, maybe my last, if God said now, shut up forever in English, I will do it. I let myself uh, led by the Spirit and I see that I don't directly say what I have to say. Or the, It's like the Holy Spirit do not allow me to say what, uh, what he has to say. And sometimes I see that it's even not very clear. So I don't understand why. Um, but as I say, I try to be led as much as possible by the Holy Spirit. Like on a human point of view now, I know that I should, I should have been talking of that prophetic message for a long time ago. And I'm sure that People already have left. Uh, uh, they're not looking anymore. They're not watching. But not God knows why I do that. And if you are listening to the end, it's the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> I'm sure that make you stay and that you are still here now and that you're going to hear what I believe the Holy Spirit has to tell you. And this is a very important message. I believe for up to now, except my video testimony where I explain who I was before, what God did in my life, that's my testimony. I believe that this message I'm going to give you is up to now the most important message. And that's what I fell, felt also when I, I gave the message in, in French. Um, so this message is that I had for many years questions. I have questions for many things concerning God and the kingdom of God. And sometimes I don't find answers. I'm sure you are like that. And sometimes we, <clears throat> we try to understand and we try to give answers, but we need to have the answer from God. And I try on the human side of view to understand and to give an answer uh, 
to this question. <clears throat> the church, when I say the church, I, I talk about <clears throat> the body of Christ, which is made of believers, living stone, the spiritual living church of God, not a de denomination, <clears throat> not a group of Christ Christians from a church or a groupment, okay? They are local churches, local assemblies. I believe that uh, this um, prophetic message is more for the Protestant side with all uh, the denomination, um, evangelical, Pentecostal, charismatics, rather than Catholics or Orthodox. But <coughs> I believe that it's a universal prophetic message, so it's also for people who are in the Catholic Church and in the Orthodox Church. Most of the Christians, many, many Christians, uh, realize when they read the Bible and when they go to the church and ask something from the responsibles of that church, which are often uh, named pastors, if you are in a Protestant community, most of the Christian sees that there is a problem with the local church and with the body of Christ. It's not functioning. There is something wrong. Uh, it's like may, so many Christians, they do not receive what they are expecting to receive compared to the Bible. Uh, they see the dysfunctionment of the church. And the question that many Christians ask, and Christians ask me also, is what can we do what is the answer to put back the Church of God or the uh, local assembly in the track of the Holy Spirit of God? So some people, they, you know, many they say, we have to get out of the church, find a new system. Others say, we have to reform completely the churches. Some they say, no, we have to pray and fast and ask a, um, a direction from God. Uh, some say, no, everything is good, is perfect. Uh, okay. And frankly, personally, I didn't have, I didn't understand, I didn't have the, the perfect answer. Why? Because I believe that if it's not coming from God, it will not be a perfect answer. Because if it doesn't come from God, an answer, or it comes from a man, or from the devil, and both are imperfect. Only God is perfect. So only an answer from God will be the right answer. So for years I searched, and try to understand, and I know many people, they wrote books about the point of view, and God gave me an answer, and I was surprised. But as I um, gave the uh, prophetic message, I understood that it was right, and the more time goes by, the more I see that uh, this is the right answer and that this message is coming from God and not from my imagination. 
if you don't know uh, me, because you may say, who is this guy and from whom he's talking, you know, from. Um, I am a servant of God. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I believe that the Bible is the word of God, the living word of God. I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. He has been uh, crucified for the sins of all. And whoever believes and be, is baptized, when I say believe, it's the Greek word with the action, of course, of repenting, he will be saved. <coughs> I believe that in, the, in, in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Uh, one thing I do in my ministry that is not at all popular and uh, I am rejected by, I don't know, 90%, 9-0 of denominations and churches, one thing I'm doing is deliverance and healing prayer. I do many things. But people, they don't like me and they reject me uh, because I'm casting out demons out of Christians. So I'm not here to, um, if you do not believe that a, a Christian needs deliverance, I don't want to get into it. You can see my teachings on sharing com on the deliverance page. There are many videos. If ever you speak also French, go to the French site. When you arrive on the site, you can choose between, you know, Spanish, French or English. Because I have much more videos in French than in English. At least now that when I'm talking in March 2014. <clears throat> this is not the point. Um, the thing is, I believe that I am led by the Holy Spirit and it's my understanding of the Word of God that every believer should be uh, a disciple. Not every believer is called to be one of the five ministries, and I believe in the five ministries. Not every believer are called to have uh, many gifts of the Spirit or work manifestation of the Holy Spirit. But we can see in Mark chapter 16, from uh, verse 16, that Jesus said, He who will believe will lay hands on the sick and they will be healed and cast out demons. So, for me, it is biblical with this verse, and also the Holy Spirit bring me to cast out many demons from many Christians, and they are delivered and set free. I have been set free from demons. For those who don't know my testimony, you can go and have a look on sharing .com. When I became a Christian, so I was a believer, and they casted out demons from me, and many years later, I went deeper and many more demons uh, had to come out. Why am I talking about deliverance? Because to answer the question and to give the prophetic message on uh, what should we do to put back the church on the track of the Holy Spirit? <coughs> What is wrong with the church and how can we resolve the problem? One last thing and before I, I answer the question, thank you for your patience, is that we must never forget if you are a Protestant, which and a Protestant is, uh, you know, uh, about <clears throat> 400 years ago, there was a reformation. Uh, the Catholic Church, you know, the priest 
started to read the Bible because uh, Gutenberg, a German guy, has invented uh, the printing system. And he studied the first book he has printed was the Bible. So for the first time, uh, many priests were able to read uh, easily the Bible in different languages. And those Catholic priests, they started to see the difference between the teaching of the Catholic Church and what is written in the Bible. And they say, we cannot accept it. And they say, we want to come back to the Bible. So there was what we call a reformation. <clears throat> and the Catholic system called them Protestant because they were protesting. And from that <clears throat> protestation, you know, after there were people who believed not only, uh, not every verse, so there were many division, and now there are, I think, about more than 200 different denomination in protest Protestantism, and among them they are uh, the Evangelicals, the Pentecostal, and, and the Charismatic. So if you are a non-Catholic or Orthodox and you believe in the Word of God, uh, there is a very big chance that you are part an, uh, of the evangelical system or Pentecostal. It's the same. I know you, they don't believe the same, etc., the baptism, the Baptist, etc. But I mean, <coughs> it's, it is the Calvinist system. What is the Calvinist system? They were, okay, we know they were Luther, and then they were Calvin. A guy, Calvin. Uh, <coughs> he, he was given the responsibility to, uh, when all so many people came out of the Catholic system, to find a, uh, a way, a, ch a local church, a way to create local church that were, uh, uh, that was able to uh, sustain itself and to be independent and not to be uh, like the Catholic system, you know, with the, the priest and um, the bishops and the Pope, etc. He didn't have a lot of time. So what he did, unfortunately, and this you can find yourself in the Bible and you can find it in the historic book. Or even you go, you don't like to read, you go on YouTube, you, go, you look for videos about the history of the uh, church of the Protestant, you will see this is historical, this is not my point of view. <coughs> he created a system that every local assembly, every local church, even a small one of 10 people, uh, had to be independent. They didn't want to, to have this hierarchy like of control like the Catholics. So he had to create like a little hierarchy uh, in a local church with a small pope on top. And he said, okay, we will put one responsible of everything and we will call him pastor, because the term, the word pastor, is in the Bible. It's one of the five uh, ministries. And since that time, more than 400 years ago, uh, all the Protestant churches uh, are running on this system. There is uh, the elders, there are the elders, there are uh, the deacons, but they do not have the role that they should have and that is written in the Bible. It's under the control of one man. Okay. I don't want to make the study. I'm not going. It's not a study. I'm not going to give uh, the verses now. Maybe I might. I may uh, do another video where I show verses by verses. <coughs> So, they took away four of the ministries and they put the responsibility on one man. Now, 
why it's not working? I mean, it's working, it's still here 400 years later, but uh, where is the power in the church? Why the church is full of sick people? Why the church is full of people living in sin? Why the people, why the churches are full of people uh, on the bonds? Depressive. They, 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 they suicide themselves. They divorce, etc. Why? Because the system is not the biblical system. It is a human system, the Calvinist system, the system from this man, Calvin. As I said, this is historical. You know, when I explain that in French, some people say, this is your point of view. But this is history. Look, read books. This is history. And the fact that the Protestant system is not written in the Bible, check it out. You have a Bible? Look at it. Normally the church is made out of ministries. As it is said in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul said, you know, there are first the apostle, secondly uh, the prophets, thirdly the teachers, and etc. There are more. And there are, of course, Ephesians 4 verse 11 with the five ministries that are there to teach the people. It's very interesting. Read Ephesians 4, not only verse 11, but 12 and 13. It will show you that every ministry has, has the same purpose. Of course, I mean, I'm not getting, sorry, I don't want to get into that. Okay, anyway. So the problem is when you want to build a house and you say, okay, I wanted, I don't know, uh, 500 meters square, you go and see an architect and this guy is telling you, okay, for the house you want to build, you need four uh, columns, you know, to sustain the house. And you say, okay, great, thank you very much. But then, for any reason, you choose to just uh, put one column, the house will have problem. Maybe it will not crush down, but there will be a lot of problem. It will be crushing in many places. It will not be functional. And that's what is happening with the churches. So, I believe, but this is me. I'm not still, I'm not yet talking about the prophetic message. I believe that uh, we should do the thing like God asked us to do them. And it is written in the Bible. And if we are doing a human way, even if it's great idea, it happened what happened, which means there are many problems. So, because many people, they realize there are problems in the churches, they try to find out, as I said, what can we do? And the human answer, I said it already, is let's get out of the church. Uh, let's uh, uh, pray for the pastor. Let's fast, let's pray, let's uh, fight against the authority, whatever. And for many years, I didn't know what was the answer, and I just said, yes, I agree with you, but I don't know what would be the answer. And then God gave me the answer in February 2014, two months ago. I'm so happy. It's quite logical, but, you know, God can hide uh, very simple things to bring them to the light when He wants. And I'm going to tell you, that's why I talk about the fact I'm doing deliverance. God showed me that we must not break the system, the church system. We must not go out and try to make it, uh, you know, 
new churches like so many people do. They said, my church is wrong. Let's go in my house, open a church. But it's worse because maybe they are not called also uh, to do that. So God told me and showed me that Every responsible, anybody who has a responsibility in the church, in a church, any churches, now that you are listening. So maybe you are a pastor, maybe you are a deacon, maybe you are an elder, maybe you don't have a title, but you are responsible of a group of women, of a group of uh, teenagers, a group of children, a, a house church. Uh, whether listen to me whether you God sorry whether God called you to do what you are doing now or it's not a call from God but you chose to do it the, this message is for you this message is for everybody called by God or not called by God first of all and you know it, you don't need me, it's written in the Bible. The Lord says that He resists the proud and He gives grace to the humble. So if you have a, any kind of responsibility, a church of four members or of four, 40,000, and you are not able anymore, or you were never able to humble yourself in front of God and of your uh, members, this is a problem. I know the, the, the higher you go and it, the more difficult it is to get down. But there is, this is something that you need to do already in your heart, you have, first of all, to be able to humble yourself in front of your God. Are you able, alone, in your prayer room, when there is only you and God, are you able to humble yourself? Real humility. If you are able to do that, the next step is that you have to humble yourself in front of your congregation. The congregation will not be able to humble himself if you do not humble yourself. Now, if you are not able to humble yourself when you're alone with God, you have to learn to do that because God resists you if you are proud. You may say, I'm not proud. But if you're not humble, it will resist you. Because not being humble is already being proud. Now, even if God didn't call you, and you have put yourself in a responsibility of being a pastor, a teacher, whatever, and people are looking at you, to hear your teachings or your way of thinking. Uh, the people, they will not be able to go further than you are yourself. So where are you? If you want to lead them to God, you have to let yourself be led, led to God. And the Holy Spirit who leads you in all the truth and who is teaching you right now as I speak will lead you to humble yourself in front of God. Now if you resist God will resist you and unfortunately you will resist the people you put yourself upon. So this is important and this is biblical. Now, God showed me something. So this is a, a, me, a prophetic message because 
it's something that is not written in the Bible. It's like, you know, when you wake up and you, you go out of your home and you say, okay, shall I go on my left or on my right? This is not written in the Bible. What the Lord showed me is to say to every people having a responsibility with a Christian, even one, if you are responsible of one Christian, which means that he put himself under you because he thinks or he is, he has less knowledge or he, ha he has less history with God, is less spiritual, he knows God less than you. Any responsible from the smallest and the unknown on this earth to the greatest known, you may think about names that everybody knows in this world, you have to undergo deliverance. Now, when God showed me that, I thought, who am I to say this to every responsible, Christian responsible on this earth? But God, the Holy Spirit, told me to say it, so I'm saying it. That is why I said in the beginning of this teaching, this video, for me, this is the most important video I made up to now, except my testimony. Because the Holy Spirit, I believe, it's a, I believe it's a message from the Holy Spirit. So if you are able to hear it and to come to God and the Holy Spirit is confirming you and you will that it is the word of God for you and you will be humble enough to obey the Holy Spirit you will be blessed. You will be a blessing for the people you are responsible for. And because you humble yourself, God will raise you. Now, if you resist, God will... <coughs> uh, I don't know if in English put you down. Now... I don't, I don't know how God wants to do that. One thing I know, and I can say it because God told me to, is that whoever you are, listen to me. Even if you are known even in the world by presidents, where, or whoever you are, you can contact me. Listen to me. I am in deliverance service. Not only, but I'm doing it. I have a little experience. But God told me to tell you that if already maybe you thought that you need deliverance or you want to know if you can go further in, you, in the healing process, but you thought, in my position, who can I go and see? I'm going to be judged. They're going to talk. So you want, but you do not trust no one. I'm making you this offer. You can contact me. And I am telling you that with me, you are under protection. Nobody will know 
if you don't want it to be known, nobody will know that you contacted me, even by phone, by mail. If you are telling me this is a secret for different reasons, I will not blow up this uh, secret. It's like, you know, uh, this... Uh, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, because uh, sometimes I think in French and... Uh, I mix up English and French. Nicodemus, sorry, yes, in English I think it's Nicodemus in John chapter 3. He came by night to see Jesus and Jesus didn't uh, betray him. I will not betray you. So if even you have questions, you want to know more about what I'm talking here now because I know that I didn't say everything I should have said but I know that the Holy Spirit did. You can contact me on one of my phone number I have in different countries or Skype or email And we can talk. We can do what we have to do. And the Lord will do what He has to do. So it's difficult for me when I give a prophetic message because uh, you know when you give a teaching you want to be sure to be clear enough so that people understand you. But the prophetic message, it's like the Holy Spirit is controlling and there are things I would like to give more uh, details, explanation to make sure that you understand what you are saying. But also somewhere the Holy Spirit is, you know, refraining me because... Uh, He's doing, he's controlling uh, this. So that's why I'm going to stop here. And I believe that, and I hope that some of you, or maybe so many, will contact me. And I know great things uh, will happen when we obey the Spirit of God. There will be many, many opposition. Uh, you will be uh, fighted by people, maybe even more by Christians, rather than non-Christians, because you cannot be obeying the Holy Spirit and have a peaceful life. Because the devil will fight you back and will try to slow you down or to stop you or to kill you. You have a choice to make. I don't know if you made that choice already many years ago. Maybe you knew that you should do that to do the will of God, but in front of the problems, you chose not to. But now maybe you are mature enough to want to obey God. Uh, God is raising now a spiritual army and for now an invisible army of people all around the world, unknown people and people that don't know each other, but God knows every name of uh, his warrior. 
Do you want to join the spiritual army of God? There is a time limit to this offer. Not by me. Because there is a time of God. And time is going faster and faster. It's getting shorter and shorter. And there are things that we may have a lot of time to do and think about before deciding for a while. And then, like that, we can get into a time where it's too late. So be careful. Do not push back for too long. Do not push back till it's too late. And like the virgins, the door open, but you don't have enough oil and you will have to run to get some. But when you come back, the door will be closed. Don't think, listen to me, don't think you are smarter than God. Don't think you can play a game with God and win. Don't think that you have everything under control, even God. Don't think you have the principle of God, the principles of God under control. Because you may uh, end up being a victim of yourself. You can find all my videos on sharing .com. There is a page I'm going to make this month on my English site named Prophecies. If you speak French, you can find this page already on the French site with uh, prof uh, prophetic messages. Uh, I think from 2006 onwards. I am Pastor and Missionary Alan Rich and I bless you in the name of uh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach. Shalom.